Here's one of my favourite HF receivers, my Icom R70. And some time ago, in fact I think it was a few years ago, uh, I made a video which is still on the channel about um, an issue I had with this receiver and uh, how intermittently it would uh, cut out and what would happen. The receiver would be on working fine, the display would go out, it would basically stop receiving, the audio would cut out and the only thing that would remain is the um, backlight on the S meter here. Now I lived with this fault for some time because I found that um, as you'll see in the earlier video if I open there's a little um, hatch door here on top of the receiver and inside I'll show you in a little bit more detail in a moment there are, are two uh, multi-pin connectors on the board here and I found that when the receiver cut out by touching one or the other of these it would come back on and, and normally it would work for sometimes a matter of hours or sometimes days or even weeks with, without any more problems. But as time went on this fault became more and more of a nuisance and this receiver got to the stage where you couldn't really turn it on without having to fiddle with these multi-way connectors and sometimes uh, that would cure it and sometimes it wouldn't. So I thought either I'm going to have to get rid of this thing as spares or repair or maybe send it some, somewhere where it can be repaired because I'll show you just how complex this little radio is inside in a moment. But at least for the time being I seem to have cured the problem and you'll see now if I switch the receiver on I'll just dim the display because it's a little bit bright for the camera. Um, it's on, the display is working, it's receiving, um, there's audio coming from it and there's Tim from the 19 meter band here quickly. Okay, so it's working fine. And I've, I've had it running for last couple of even, evenings for hours and hours and it hasn't cut out. So what did I do? Let's go and have a look. Okay, here's the receiver and what I've done now, let's see I've taken the top cover off. Well, there's an opportunity to, uh, to look inside. And the prospect of disassembling this uh, wasn't something I was looking forward to. There's a number of uh, boards in here, and you can see around the side we've got uh, you can see on the side we've got other components. Just over the top again, and that's the other side of the receiver. So quite a complex beast. very well constructed. So what did I do? Well I found as I say um, if you remember there was a little hatch on top of the receiver and by lifting it you could access um, not this one actually but it was this multi-way connector here and I think this one here. I found that if I either pressed on this or pressed on that one then the receiver would spring back into life. But it became more and more of an issue. So I disconnected these two, cleaned the pins, put a bit of switch cleaner in, fiberglass pencil, cleaned the pins up. They didn't appear particularly tarnished, cleaned them up. It didn't seem to make much difference. And I tried similar with these other multi-way connectors along here. And uh, nothing seemed to work. So, um, you can see it would be quite involved to remove this board out of here. And I was concerned that there might be a dry joint under the, these pins here or here. But I did notice as I was going through things that these screws that hold the board down here and here. And there's one, if you just see it there, there's one here. And furthermore, there's one just there. There's a couple at the back here. Let's just see there. There's one there and one there. Those screws were slightly loose and I went through with my uh, trusty screwdriver and tightened them up just a turn or so. And since I've done that, the problem's disappeared. 
Now, whether that's a permanent fix or not, I don't know. It's a bit too good to be true. But whether there was a problem that something wasn't making contact here, I did notice that when I pressed this, the board seemed to flex slightly, which it's not doing now, now that I've tightened these screws. So that's what I did in this case, and it seems to have... Okay, with the problem with the R70, which is great, because the R70 is one of my favourite receivers. So I just thought I'd uh, give you a little update. It's uh, kind of very late in the day. The original um, video on this problem was uh, at least a couple of years ago, I think. But it got so bad with this that I couldn't live with the, the problem as it was. Why these would be in any way loose, I don't know. Whether it means the receiver's been serviced or looked at before. And uh, those weren't tightened up. Um, or it came that way from the factory, I don't know. But that's all I did, and that seems to have made a significant difference. So, there we go. The R70 receiver.